Hi everyone, SQL Geordie here. Just another very quick demo uh, to show something that uh, answer a question that, that basically gets asked at every time, every session I've ever done uh, within Docker and certainly SQL and Linux on Docker. Now, with images, as we, we are, I'm sure most of you are aware, you have uh, essentially a union layered file system. So each image will have its base OS and if you want to make any changes to that, it will write those changes to the writable layer, whether that's environmental changes or possibly installing another bit of software within the container, whatever it may be. So if you've got multiple steps within that, it's going to create multiple image layers. And that can become sort of quite cumbersome to, to maintain. And there may potentially, depending on how well the caching works, there may be a slight performance impact. So a question that does get asked is, is there a way <clears throat> that we can, you know, merge all these layered files together, these image layers? And there is, um, essentially there is a parameter you could pass in to your, your build statement. And if you build from a Docker file to squash all these changes. So what we're going to go through in this demo is showing a build without squashing the images and then with just to show the, the differences. So we're going to start very quickly with something, uh, creating an image called SQL Linux Docker file restore AW1. The AW stands for Adventure Works. It's just an image that I had, uh, or a Docker file I certainly have, that I could use to test here. So we're just going to check, do we have that? No, we don't have that at the moment, which is great. So this Docker file is already set up, it's a very, very simple Docker file. All it's going to do is copy uh, backup of the AdventureWorks database in there and restore it. Nothing complex, but there is a, a few steps within that. So very simply, Docker build, and we're going to give it a name, looking for something called Docker file. And within that, you should see seven different steps of what the, the Docker file, the instructions within the Docker file is doing. For example, using a particular image that I've created myself for demo purposes, or creating a directory, setting that as the working directory, copying files, etc., etc. So now that that's built, we can have a quick look at the history of that using the Docker history statement uh, command, sorry. So very, very simple. In there, this will show you all the various different image layers that have been used to build this file. And you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each of the different steps we've had in the Docker file, building this image. You can see it's doing the make directory, make the IR, setting the working directory, copying the files, and everything that I've told it to do within the, the Docker file itself. And as you can see, each of these image layers has its own size. A range of them, 67 meg, 86, 222 bytes. So we don't necessarily want each of those layers. I mean, the good things about having it is we could potentially build from each layer that's there. So, you know, we can, we can choose a particular image ID and just build from that, which is one of the beauties of it. But sometimes we, we're not interested in that. We just want to build an image, which is nice and neat and tidy. So I'm just going to clean that up, get rid of that, and run pretty much the same statement again, giving it a different name. But you'll see here, we have dash dash squash. And what that will do is that will merge all, all those image layers into one. And you should see in the comments, something telling us that it's been merged and all there'll still be a reference to all the, the previous image layers, but they'll be classed as missing. They won't, they won't be there exist anymore. So hopefully that should be done now. It is, and if we do Docker history again on that one, we will see here that we essentially only have one image ID, all these that were built are now classed as missing. We can see that in the, 
across over here, we can see that we've merged these images together. And something interesting to note, obviously the size is 86.1 meg, and that's just of a single layer in this image itself. So as you can see, it's very, very simple to be able to do this. Hopefully something you can start utilizing. As per usual, any questions, queries, issues you may have with it, by all means, just give me a shout. Thanks, bye.